On this channel, we talk about the greatest lie of our generation, the hoax of black victimization. Well, calling something the greatest lie of our generation, that sets the bar very high. So I never ask you guys to believe anything. I just show you over and over and over. And so I'm going to test that right now. And I'm going to show you why we do that. So if I came on this channel and I said, hey, you guys, I heard Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live had a secret audition for black women because they always have to have one black woman on the show. What would you say about that? You'd say, Colin, just because you heard about it, that doesn't make it true because on the face of it, that is such, such pandering, such, such blatant ridiculousness. I can't even find the right words at the moment. That's so incredibly obviously stupid that nobody would do that. Nobody would do that, and nobody would participate in it. But it's true. And they were bragging about it on NPR over the weekend. Why don't we run a clip from Sam Sanders, and it's been a minute. From NPR, I'm Sam Sanders. It's been a minute. It's Tuesday, and I have a conversation for you. Today, I'm talking with Natasha Rothwell. She joined me at NPR West Studios in Culver City. A lot of you know Natasha from her role as Kelly on HBO's Insecure. This character, Kelly, is, in my opinion, the funniest character on a show full of funny characters. Kelly is this loud and unapologetic and hilarious, driven black woman who is part of this friend circle of strong black women trying to make it professionally and personally in L.A. And she got a writing job on SNL through a secret black woman-only SNL audition. Yeah. You end up being one of the success stories out of the weird, strange SNL race debacle. Yeah. How do we set this up? So uh, there had been critique, and there's always been critique about always. the racial makeup of that show. Mm -hmm. But it reached such a fever pitch that a few years ago, <laughs> Lauren Michael, the head of the show, mm -hmm. had like a secret black lady audition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, what <laughs> I just... So I talked to... Um, so she was a maida a while back about her experience at that audition. Yeah. And I'm still like, that must have been the craziest thing. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> for me, doing comedy in New York, for most people who do comedy in New York, yeah. I'll speak generally, yeah. they have sort of their crosshairs set on being on SNL. That is the holy grail. That's ground. the holy grail. That was not my case because of said yeah. issues with their casting. Yeah. I had not seen myself reflected in the cast yeah. or someone who looked like me exactly. on the cast i'll rephrase that and so because i'm like in thinking of black women maya rudolph yes. another black woman from way back in the day yes but there was like two yeah yeah and so for me i was just like you know i don't want to feel like running my head against a wall that i knew that was sort of impenetrable and so while I was on that grind, yeah. um, I was contacted by the artistic director at the time uh, at the People's Improv Theater and said, listen, uh, SNL reached out to me. They're doing this audition. Uh, and they asked me who I think should be a part of it. And I said, you. And I was like, OK. Did it feel weird? Yes. It's like this is an underground railroad audition. What yeah, I, well, I didn't, to be honest, like me being completely wide-eyed and naive, I showed up and I thought it was just going to be a multicultural, like, oh. I didn't know it was just like black women until <laughs> I'm backstage. I was backstage. I was like, what kind of utopia is this? I was like, this is heaven. I remember we took a picture, which like got leaked somehow. Yeah. And I was just like, this, I've never, all of us talked about how we're always the only one. Yeah. You know, like yeah. if we're on our Herald teams or if we're showing up for different things up uh -huh. until that point, it'd be a black person. Yeah. Maybe a black woman. Mm -hmm. Not a room full of talented, funny black women. Yeah. Well, then they bring you together. And like, they bring us kiki together. Kiki to kiki, but yeah. now you got to compete. Yeah, like to the death. In right? the Comedy <laughs> Hunger Games. In the Comedy Hunger Games. But I, when I, here's the thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, I want, I like a thousand percent, like, was... At the point when someone's just like, here's a party that you definitely weren't going to be invited to, but now you have a special invitation. You dress up. Like, you get dressed, you, like, get ready. So I was like, okay, I'm going to really try to go after this. But I remember seeing everyone backstage, and I hit a point emotionally where I was just like, I don't think I'm what they're looking for. And not for my ability, but 
they classically cast people who look like the imitations, like the, the impersonations that they'll uh. do. And at the time, they were looking for a Michelle Obama, and I was like, that ain't me. <laughs> but you know what I am? I'm funny. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm, I'm going to write and perform something that I think is very funny and that makes me laugh. What did you perform? Um, I did uh, impressions of Oprah, Maya Angelou. I did Keenan. Keenan was in the audience, and so I did a Keenan. You Kenan. did Keenan. I did Keenan for Keenan. It was completely silent, which is me doing all of his looks, <laughs> which are just like, because yes. he does a lot of wide eyes oh, to the camera. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I just announced it, you know, I'm doing Keenan, and it was just... I love it. There's just a lot of like <laughs> side looks and I um, and I had such I felt in that moment like a fearlessness with the audition because I was like I've got nothing to lose mm -hmm. and I had a great audition I felt really good about it um, and that's what I want to have happen and like everything else that happened after that was all a shock and awe campaign like because no then idea. they came to you and said you should write for us yeah um, they reached out to my manager at the time and they well not she's still my manager I love her to death and mm -hmm. what's up um, she <laughs> she said that they contacted her and were just like it was one of the best written auditions we'd seen and would wow. you come in for a meeting to write for the show and it was another I remember um, getting the the call for that and it was. A, a long time oh, it was really? a it was a time enough for me to sort of grieve not getting it mm. then that popped up again so it was just a very it was a back and forth of just like the hot you know the hot guy yeah. wants you he don't want you uh, he called you know yeah, it's just like yeah. you know i don't want to mess like, with him i already blocked his number i blocked his number who's this and then you're just like okay let me you know put on some makeup and see what he wants so <laughs> yeah it was definitely that going into uh meet with the head writers and you know ultimately right for the show. So that is the face of black oppression these days. You have white people falling all over themselves to give special parts to black women on Saturday Night Live. Wow. And so when people come out and they acknowledge, they admit, they brag about their racial quotas on their show, on their network, in their business. Please, sir. I want some more. Doesn't that give a lot of people the right to look at other people on that network, other people on that show, and wonder if they're genuinely talented, genuinely funny, genuinely good, or they're just filling some kind of feel-good racial quota at the network? All this special treatment delegitimizes black success. You don't want to do that because that's going to make the black kids angry. 